Welcome, I am Matt Lorenzen and I am your statistics professor. I thought I would do a video, a brief video of each of the chapters to give you a little more information and um, about some, some of the main points of the chapter. Um, this isn't a comprehensive lecture by any means, but I just wanted to give you sort of a brief 10 minute uh, overview of some, of some key points and stuff. So here we go. So let's say you have the question, does driving um, while texting result in worse driving performance than just driving? So you form your hypothesis, driving by texting will result in worse driving performance than just driving. This, of course, is the example from your text. You run your test and you get your results. And as you can see, this is again from the text right here. Um, you have the people that are just driving right here, um, not getting in too many crashes. As you can see right here, the number of crashes on the y-axis and the two different conditions on the uh, x-axis. And as you can see, the dual task people, people that are texting and driving, have a lot more crashes. Um, one of some terms that I'm gonna go over in this lecture right now uh, are sort of highlighted in red right here. One of them is statistically significant, and that's a statistical outcome indicating that the data from the individuals measured indicate that an effect or a relationship exists. In this class, you'll be using inferential statistics as well as descriptive statistics, but in this case, inferential statistics, what I'm talking about, and that's a type of statistics that help researchers test a hypothesis, and you'll be able to determine with a statistical surety um, using some statistics of this class, whether or not an actual difference uh, exists between uh, these two uh, conditions right here. And again, descriptive statistics, a type of statistics that help researchers summarize or describe data. Um, three terms in the book that they talk about, the mean, which is basically the average of scores for a set of data uh, accomplished by adding up all the scores and then dividing by the number of scores, of course. The frequency, it has to do with how often a response or score occurs within a data set. As you can see right here, this is a standard bell curve. And if you have on the y-axis right here, number of people, and let's say on the x-axis, uh, test scores, um, something like that, you can see the mean is the middle right here, the average score represented by this kind of U looking um, character. And then in terms of frequency of scores, you can obviously see that there's a lot of frequency of scores here. There's quite, uh, quite a number of scores here. And then as you get into the higher test scores, the number of scores tail off and the lower test scores, the number of scores tail off. And so they're not as frequent. And variability is uh, sort of a, a related term, of course, and that has to do with the spread of scores in a distribution. And as you can see, um, people score differently in terms of uh, whether or not they're scoring high in the middle or on the low end, and that has to do with variability. So a couple other terms, independent variable and dependent variable. We've been talking about these in the discussion assignments. You've been doing really well in identifying them. The independent variable is a variable in an experiment that changes across or within subjects to allow comparison of a behavior in those different situations. It's essentially the variable that you manipulate. And I'm gonna give you an example of how you do that um, in a second here um, in an experiment that I have down below, excuse me. <clears throat> and uh, the dependent variable is the behavior that researchers are interested in measuring. So you're going to, in this uh, next study, we're going to take a look at how you uh, manipulate the independent variable and then you measure uh, the dependent variable. And in this case, the dependent variable is the number of words uh, recalled correctly on a test, on a memory test. And so uh, let's take a look at it. So you have a question, does caffeine improve memory? And your hypothesis is yes, caffeine does improve memory. And you wanna test it. So you decide to randomly assign subjects to two groups. The experimental group, um, that's the group that gets the caffeine pill, okay? And the control group, and that's the group that gets a fake pill or what's called a placebo. You give the groups their chosen pills, give them time to study the list of words, and then uh, give them or test them on the recall of words. In this case, the independent variable is caffeine. You're giving one group caffeine and in the other group you're not giving them caffeine. 
and the dependent variable is the number of words that they correctly recall on the test. And using inferential statistics, which remember is a type of statistics that help researchers to test a hypothesis and answer whether a difference exists. I can answer now with a statistical surety if caffeine helps with memory by comparing the two groups. And as you can see right here, we have caffeine. Looks like they did a lot better than the no caffeine. And we're going to use inferential statistics, which you'll learn in this class, to be able to say with a statistical amount of surety that yes, there is in fact a difference. And it looks like there might be a difference here, but that's how you're going to determine it for sure by uh, using the inferential statistics. A couple other uh, topics we have in the text between subjects variable and within subjects variable. And these simply mean uh, a variable that changes across different groups of subjects in a research study. Um, you find these in a between subjects design. We're going to learn about this type of design later, but simply that is just like the, the uh, experiment that I just showed you, where you randomly assign, excuse me, you randomly assign two groups uh, uh, to two groups, where one groups one group gets the treatment, the experimental group, and they got the caffeine. And then you uh, randomly assign the other group to the control group, where they got the fake pill. And what you are finding here is this is a between subjects variable because only one group gets the, the treatment and the other group doesn't get the treatment. In the within subjects variable, that's a variable that changes within a single group of subjects in a research study, such that each subject experiences all the different situations compared. Um, in this case, everyone's going to get the treatment as opposed to in the between subjects where only one group got the treatment. And you find these in a within subjects design, which we'll study a little later. And uh, for example, a famous one is a pre and post test where all subjects get the treatment, of course, that is the definition of within subjects. And uh, to use a caffeine example, we could give the subjects a test without the caffeine and then retest them on a difference, on similar set of words, of course not the same words, um, while they're caffeinated. And we can see the pre-test, how they did with, when they were not caffeinated, and the post-test, how they're doing when they are caffeinated. And we can compare their scores. Again, it's the same group of people. They're getting both treatments. And that defines within subjects variable. And between subjects is they're going into two groups. And I just think of between subjects, between groups, within subjects, just they're within one group. That's kind of my way of memorizing it, if you will. <clears throat> the book talks about two uh, types of studies, experiments and correlational studies. Um, the study that I talked about um, with the caffeine and the memory test is a, an experiment. This is a type of research design, <coughs> excuse me, um, that involves a comparison of behavior observed in different situations. In the previous, previous example where I used random assignment and control the independent variable. One group gets it, the other group, get, uh, group gets a fake pill. Is an experiment where I can gain information about causal relationships, and that is the caffeine and uh, whether it affects memory performance. Um, the strict control allows us to say what causes what. So I'm controlling basically, randomly assign, assigning, assigning people into two groups, and then I'm controlling uh, what group gets what. One group gets uh, caffeine, the other group thinks they're getting caffeine, but they're really not. And all the other conditions are the same. And so by that control, I can start to say then, when I get results and I analyze the results, uh, with all that control, I can start to say what causes what. In correlational studies, um, that's different. It just examines the relationships measured uh, between measured dependent variables. It just shows relationships and it cannot prove causality. What are correlations? Uh, there's two types. There's positive correlation and negative correlation. Positive correlation, a term reviewed in the book, is a relationship between variables characterized by an increase in one variable that occurs with an increase in the other variable. Right here, if you look at the chart right here, and we're talking about exercise and grades, down here we have, let's say, the amount of minutes of exercise or something like that. And then on the top right here is a grade scale. And as you can see, the positive correlation here is 
as the amount of minutes of exercise increase, what also increases the grades. Um, and that is called what, everyone? Positive correlation. Let's take a look at negative correlation. That's a relationship which is the exact opposite between variables, characterized by an increase in one variable that occurs with a decrease in the other variable. And I give the example again of exercise and stress this time. So we have a stress level on the y-axis right here and uh, amount of exercise on the x-axis. And as you can see, as the amount of exercise increases, what happens to the stress? It decreases. And that is called, everyone, a negative correlation. Correlational studies, again, examine the relationships measured between uh, dependent variables, between measured dependent variables. And it just shows relationships. It cannot prove causality. Doesn't really talk about these uh, terms in the book, but I just wanted to just explain them a little bit, why it can't show causality. And there are two sort of, uh, sort of concepts that embrace this. Uh, one is called the third variable problem. And I give an example of every day I brush my teeth every morning and afterwards the sun rises in the east. There is a direct one-to-one -one cor positive correlation. I brush my teeth, the sun comes up right afterwards. Does this mean that brushing my teeth causes the sun to rise in the morning? Of course not. There's another variable for that. And just because there's a one-to-one -one correlation, it might imply that there might be something causal about it, but it certainly doesn't uh, mean that there is causation in that, as the silly example of brushing my teeth and the sun coming up in the east. Um, the other one is called the directionality problem, and this is kind of interesting. So take, take a look at it. When I'm stressed out, I have problems sleeping. When I have problems sleeping, I get stressed out. Which causes which? Does stress cause sleep problems, or do sleep problems cause stress? 